welcome back to pronunciation with Emma. In this video I'm going to talk about how you can improve your English with these five habits that I'm going to share with you in today's video. The first habit I want to talk about getting into is listening to podcasts. Now this is something that you can do while you're doing other things around the house. So instead of listening to music or cleaning in silence, you can put a podcast on in the background and just have it there as background noise. Just get used to the sounds of the language. You don't have to listen to every single word and understand. Just start to tune your ear to the language and have it on in the background. And before you ask me, Emma, which are the best English learning podcasts? I think English learning podcasts are absolutely fantastic. They are a great resource, but to keep you motivated, I highly recommend that you also find podcasts that are about the topics that you're interested in. So let's say you're interested in reading. Maybe you can listen to a podcast that talks about different books. Or if you're interested in technology, you listen to technology podcasts, video games, you listen to video gaming podcasts, whatever you are interested in. I'm sure there is a podcast out there for you to listen to. And by listening to podcasts that are about topics you are interested in, it will keep you motivated longer and you will be more likely to stick with that podcast and listen to it longer, thus improving your English. Now, point number two that I want to talk about is taking a language class every day. Now, this is something that's quite hard to do, but I have something that could help you out that I think you might like. Now, this section of the video has been sponsored by Lingoda. I think it is a great online language school where you can take classes with qualified English teachers from around the world, so it will help expose you to many different accents. By taking a language class every single day, it will help you feel more confident about your English. You will feel in safer hands because you have a teacher there explaining things to you, and as well, you can practice your speaking, which is quite hard to do when you're by yourself and learning by yourself at home. Home. However, to help you with this, Lingoda are starting their next sprint this April. The sprint lasts for three months, and if you follow the rules of the sprint, you can receive up to 100% cash back, and this includes your tuition fee and your deposit. Lingoda are offering two different sprints. There is the super sprint, and then there is just the normal sprint. The super sprint is more intensive. You need to complete 30 lessons within a month's period over the course of three months, and you will receive 100% cash back on that if you follow the rules and you complete the sprint. For the second one, just the normal sprint, you need to complete 15 classes within a month for three months. It's a little bit less intensive, and for that one, if you complete it, follow the rules, you will receive 50% of your cash back for that one. You can join the sprint in English, Business English, German, French, and Spanish. Classes also range from beginner to advanced levels. And what's really nice about the platform, this is something I really liked, is that you can see exactly what the levels are. So you don't just pick random topics, you can pick topics that are within levels. It's very, very well organized as the platform. The lessons are in groups of no more than five students, and you also get free access to Cambridge speaking online tests. I feel really confident about sharing Lingoda with you because Lingoda have allowed me to try out some of their classes. They allowed me to check out some of their English classes so I joined some of those and they also gave me some German classes they asked me what language do I want to do and I said can you Spanish or German surprise me and they surprised me with German and I hadn't spoken German for about three years um, so I was really nervous actually in my first lesson with Lingoda for the German lessons of course and it was fine. <laughs> the, the classes were small and as well the teachers were so patient, they were so kind, they were so, they were really enthusiastic, really passionate as well and we did a lot of speaking. I haven't spoken that much German in such a long time so it was a fantastic experience. So how do you join? In the description of this video you will see a link and you can use that to sign up. The places are limited and the doors will close soon so if you're thinking about doing it 
don't waste too much time. Don't leave it to the last minute. If you use the code CHANGE25, then you will get 10 euros off the deposit. So the deposit is usually 49 euros, but with the discount code, you get 10 euros off that. You must complete the agreed number of classes within those three months, follow the rules, and then you'll receive your refund or partial refund, depending on the type of sprint that you choose to do. As a quick note before I jump on to point number three, um, I did join some of the Lingoda Facebook groups to check out whether this is real and whether people do get their uh, refunds back and it is true there are Facebook groups where people are sharing their experiences of Lingoda, what it's like. I managed to also talk to some of the teachers at Lingoda, talk about their experience and everyone so far has been really positive about it so I feel really confident about sharing this. I think it's something that can help you if you want to do something like this so that's that. All the information is in the link below. Click on that and that's it. Point number three is reading, and reading is so underrated. Now you may be thinking, oh, but Emma, I hate reading. And I always say to people, well, it's because you've not found the right things to read. So I'm going to split this section into different levels of people who are maybe a little lazier or maybe who don't like reading big books and chunks of text to the people who are maybe a bit more advanced or they maybe are quite comfortable reading bigger texts. So for our lazy viewers, I know that some of you are lazy, you get what I mean. Um, but if you don't like reading you huge chunks of texts, then I highly recommend that you get Twitter and you switch the language to English. So the tweets are no bigger than, what is it, 100 and something characters? It's really short. So you can be scrolling through and reading about short news articles, getting the headlines, things like that, reading your friends' tweets, reading celebrities tweets and picking up vocabulary this way. You can also do this with Facebook and other things as well but I specifically recommend Twitter because there is a character limit. On Facebook you can write paragraphs and paragraphs in posts but Twitter is very short. The next level is more for people who want to get into reading texts but they don't know where to start or they find them quite difficult to read. So what I recommend here are graded readers and these are basically books that are adapted to certain levels. Most of the time these sort of books will include some sort of glossary or a dictionary, some activities to practice the vocabulary and check your comprehension. A lot of them include CDs that you can listen, you can practice your listening as well as your pronunciation, speaking skills, you can listen and repeat. So this is a really good way to get into reading at this level. A slightly higher level would be parallel readers. I definitely recommend parallel readers, especially if you do quite a bit of translating when you are reading and you really don't want to keep going to Google and translating something. Parallel readers are great. They basically have one page in your native language and one page in your target language. So for example, as an English person learning Spanish, one page would be in English for me and the other page would be in Spanish. And this just makes translation a lot quicker. It's not for everyone. Some people don't like translating, but if you just want to crack on reading and you don't want to waste time getting out Google and translating stuff, then this is an alternative to that. The next level would be for people who are wanting to read books that are not written for English learners. So I do have a video about this that goes into a lot more detail and it gives loads of different suggestions, but you could start reading things like Harry Potter. Um, oh, there was also another really good one. The boy, uh, what's it called? I was the, the, the mysterious case of the or the curious case of the dog in the i don't remember the name of it i'll put a picture here okay <laughs> but this is also really good um another great book it's very very sad but it's really good if you're quite a low level is um 13 reasons why and the reason why this one is good is because it's mostly written in the present tense. It tells the story in the present, so it's using a lot of present tenses. So it's great if you only really know the present tense so far, you're not so good with other tenses. Um, that's a good option as well. 
So yeah, go check out that video. I will link it in the card above and pop it in the description for you to check out after if you want to get some more suggestions on reading, especially like parallel readers, some different websites. If you can't afford to buy books, there are some websites there as well for you where you can read for free. And remember that you can check out blogs as well. There are hundreds of blogs about many topics. Find something that you enjoy reading about in your native language and just find a blog about it in English. Point number four is to do your hobbies in English. So think about the things that you do in your spare time that you enjoy and start to do them in English. Maybe you enjoy cooking and you look for recipes online or you watch some YouTube channels about uh, different recipes and cooking and nutrition, things like that. Find some in English or if you're interested in tech reviews, find some tech reviews in English. If you like going on Reddit forums, find some Reddit forums and some subreddits that are all about things that you enjoy talking about in your native language, but find them in English and then you can take part in those discussions. You'll be practicing your reading and your writing in those cases. I know that we can't all go outside right now to uh, play tennis with our friends, play football, things like that, but it is worth checking out to see if there are any groups in your area or meetups where you can meet up with people, play a sport, for example football, tennis, whatever, but do it in English. I remember this happened a lot in Spain. People would meet up and play paddle together, but they would speak in English, mostly Spanglish. It was quite fun. So you can also do that as well. Maybe you're interested in yoga. Instead of doing yoga classes in your native language, you can take yoga classes online in English and it's a win-win. You're working out your body and you're working out your mind. <laughs> now, point number five, the last one of this video, hear me out, is video games, okay? I know many of you will be thinking, but Emma, I really don't like video games. Stick with me on this one. I may just be able to convince you. I genuinely believe that video games cover all areas of language learning, from your speaking, to your writing, to your listening, and so on. Now, if you don't like video games, but, but you enjoy watching TV series and things like that, because I didn't include that on the list, it's kind of an obvious one, but <laughs> um, if you really enjoy watching TV series, there are story-based games out there that you may enjoy. For example, there's a company called Don't Nod and they make games such as Life is Strange, Tell Me Why, I think they made a Life is Strange 2, um, Life is Strange Beyond the Storm, was it before? Before the Storm, <laughs> not beyond. And all of these are story-based games where the choices that you make affect the story. So you become very involved in the story because you are the one that is controlling the story. Think of this as being more like an interactive TV show. Think of it like Bandersnatch, you know, with Bandersnatch, which was made by the same people who did Black Mirror. You can find that on Netflix. You watch it, you make choices in the game and those choices can have an effect on later things in the game. It's really interesting actually. So even if you don't think you like video games, you may like the story-based video games if you enjoy watching TV series and films. Think of it as like an interactive TV series. Now to practice your speaking and your writing, because at this point you're probably thinking, what? How can I practice these when I'm playing a video game about choices, Emma, or I'm playing Mario? Apart from like screaming at the screen every time you die or something like that. Join some Discord servers. Now, I do have a Discord server, which is for everyone. Anyone can join, whether you're a teacher, a learner, whoever you are. And there are people in there who are very willing to chat, practice their English. I do make a rule though in the Discord server that you cannot join and say, does anyone want to practice English with me? You must talk about different topics other than speak English to me. So people talk about everything in there. We have a memes channel that we talk about memes and laugh at memes. If someone doesn't understand a meme, we explain it to them. So it's like, it's like a nice safe 
community in there. Everyone's really willing to help each other out. And as well, from time to time, I play video games with people in there as well. There's a voice channel where people can join it, um, message and say, hey, does anyone want to chat? I'm free right now. People join, they talk to each other. I sometimes play Among Us with followers as well. So it's a nice way to uh, meet other people if you're new to Discord. And then when you're a bit more familiar with Discord after joining that server, then later you can find other ones for games that you enjoy playing and then find players to play with in those games. You know, if you enjoy, oh, what's that really popular one here? No, not Heroes of the Storm, League of Legends, that's the one. There are people in there that like League of Legends as well. So you can find people to talk to, play games with, you can then start playing with them and you get the idea. So those are all the points, quite a long video for today, but I did want to go into detail about each point and give you genuine advice as opposed to just saying, read a book, listen to a podcast. You know, I wanted this to be like a complete video where I went into a bit more detail and gave you some additional advice on these things and point you in directions of where to go. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned something new. If you have, then please leave the video a big thumbs up, give it a like, and also subscribe if you're brand new around here as well. If you hit the bell icon next to that subscribe button, you'll receive a notification every single time I go live and I post a new video. So I usually post videos about pronunciation, of course, it's my channel name, but today a lot of people have been asking for advice on how they can improve their English, what can they do every day, and that's why this video is a little bit different. But I hope that you've enjoyed it nevertheless. Have a lovely day and I will see you next lesson. Bye bye!